This is our review of the new Netflix movie, Leave the World Behind. Just in case you don't know what this movie is about, it is an adaptation of the Roman Alam book, which is also excellent. It involves a, a family of four who take an impromptu vacation out of the city and to Long Island. And while they're there one night, late at night, there's a knock on the door. Two people are at the door who claim that that house is theirs and that they had to return home unexpectedly because of a blackout. So now you've got this house full of strangers who have to live together and figure things out as a potentially catastrophic disaster unfolds beyond their home. I thought this movie was exceptional, Steve. So I've told some people this already. I saw the movie at the film's AFI Fest premiere and I'm like, shit, I love this. This is right up my alley. Immediately left that screening and I bought the book, flew through the book, love, love, loved the book, and then got the opportunity to watch the movie again. So it probably goes without saying at this point, I am obsessed with it. And one of the things that I admire most about it is how good the balance is between giving you enough to chew on and making it a satisfying and thoughtful watch, but also leaving certain doors open so that the horrific nature of what is happening and what it could be to its core sticks with you well after you watch the movie. I thought this was a phenomenal adaptation. Uh, I have not read the book. I was at the same world premiere as you watching it at the Chinese theater. And uh, I was blown away by this film. It is a fan fantastic movie it is uh, I, I rewatched it last night to prepare for the event tonight um the thing that is so good is as you said it not only are all the performances fantastic but it's the way the information the way that sam the director writer director gives you information uh, like the way he dishes it out but like it keeps you guessing but also the way he gives information to the audience that sometimes the characters don't know. Like he does some interesting things. He has some very cool shots that are unexpected and um, he makes very unusual choices. The music also, when I, watched, when I watched it again last night, which I didn't realize the first time, the opening credits, uh, so this is minor spoiler. So if you don't oh. wanna know anymore, what? Maybe to, if it's a spoiler alert, I feel like I know what you're going to say and maybe don't okay. say it. <laughs> so sure. Opening credits are interesting. I'll say it like that. Uh, but the thing, the best compliment I can give this movie and, um, and, and I don't want this to come like I'm like, I'm saying bad things about Netflix, but the best compliment I can give this is it never feels like a Netflix movie. There's no algorithm making decisions mm -hmm. in this film there. This is Sam Asmiel's direction. This is, he has crafted his own movie that happens to be playing on Netflix. There's no, nothing about this movie is, um, like I said, is part of an algorithm. You know, it's just a great movie. And again, it, it really is the kind of movie that I wish more people could see on the big screen because it's that good. Um, but it's so good that even if you watch it at home, uh, you're going to love it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how you see this movie and then say, oh, that's not good. Yeah, it's it's really good. I'll emphasize something you just said. One of the things that I appreciate about this movie and, and the adaptation of the book most is that it is so clearly Sam Esmail's movie. You know with certainty after watching this that if anybody else adapted that story, like, yeah, maybe it would be a good movie also, but it would never be anything like the style that he brings to his adaptation. And then the other point I wanted to make was I kind of wish they were pushing this a little harder in the award space, but I, I understand that Netflix has their hands full this year with quite a few exceptional films. But in particular, this to me feels like one of the best cast films of the year. Like if anything, I really do think it deserves some ensemble nominations. Um, obviously, in particular, Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, Mahershala Ali, and Mahala are phenomenal. But then the two actors who play the kids, Kevin Bacon pops up, and they're, they're all pitch perfect. And I feel like if you don't have pitch perfect casting where the actors understand their characters to the fullest and are able to bring their internal worlds to screen before your eyes, this concept doesn't work and they all do it. They all have maximum chemistry with one another. I wish they got honors for their work here. Yeah, I I agree with everything you said, but I also understand why Netflix is not pushing this because they have, this is not <laughs> what Academy voters are gonna look at 
and say, oh my God, Julia Roberts' performance, which is fantastic and so different than what she normally does. And like, there's a scene at the beginning where the camera zooms in on her and I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. Um, but it's just not gonna, it's not gonna go the way Maestro with, you know, like there's there's other performances that are like Oscar movies. Ugh. And that's why they're gonna, you know, Netflix is gonna put their money behind it. But make no mistake, this is just a great movie. Like it's it's a great movie. I can't wait until the definition of Oscar movie just absolutely crumbles. I think, I think, and I'm grateful for the fact that in recent years, it feels like certain movies, like let's say everything everywhere all at once broke through and surprised and weren't the traditional Oscar package, but still earned that acclaim because they were so damn good. I think we're making steps in the right direction, but, and like, I don't think you're wrong for expressing that mentality too. I think that is part of it, but I just, I wish we weren't boxing these movies in sure. so specifically for I, award season when they're deserving, even if they fall in other genres and have non oscar or at least traditionally stories unfolding. I hear what you're saying, but if I'm being like really honest about leave the world behind, like no, no BS. I think Julia Roberts is fantastic in the movie. And I think that her performance is probably the one that I would single out as that's the one. Um, Cause it's, I really loved her work in it. Um, and I think that the script is fantastic. Um, and I think that could be something that you talk about with awards. I wouldn't talk about the VFX. I wouldn't talk about uh, like, I think that it would, for me, it would be the script and it would be Julia Roberts. And you could make the argument for Sam's direction. Cinematography um, but, and score. Yeah, the score is great. Um, but the problem is, you know, like if there's five slots, can you tell me that this is better than the, like, you know what I mean? Like I would say that um, Giacchino with Society of the Snow is one of the best scores I've heard all year. Like if that doesn't get nominated, it's a travesty. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and that's a Netflix movie. So like what I'm saying is like right there, Society of the Snow is already in my top five. And there's others that I could, you know, pick out. What I'm basically saying is it's, it's a really good year and mm -hmm. yeah. uh, leave the world behind while I loved it. I don't know if I can make the argument that it's going to win awards. I can't make the argument that it will win awards, but I can make the argument that it should. I could also make the argument that if you are thinking to yourself, well, I'll watch the movie and then I don't have to read the book. I really do think both versions of the story stand on their own two feet exceptionally well and offer a little something different. So if you have knowledge of both versions of the story, one winds up enhancing the other, which I think makes for a fuller experience overall. So I would recommend checking out both.